What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out eight tips to help you get the most out of SketchUp's new rendering engine. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you are interested in learning more about rendering in SketchUp 2025, we are going to be doing a workshop in the SketchUp Essentials course where we talk through everything about rendering in SketchUp, the limitations, what it's good for, how to set up these images so that you can maximize the way they're going to look. All of that is going to be discussed in that workshop on May 8th, 2025. Any member of the SketchUp course, any active member of the SketchUp Essentials course is going to be able to attend that live, ask questions, and we're just going to really dive deep in rendering. So if you do want to check that out, you can do that at the sketchupessentials.com slash render workshop. All right, so tip one is how you can drive the shadows in your model with the HDRI environments. So first off, when we toggle over into PhotoReal rendering mode, it's going to start lighting the model using the environment in the background. We've got either preset backgrounds or you can bring in your own. But notice how when you do this, it's actually not driving the shadows in the model. And really, the shadows are not set to be on as default. So when you toggle over into PBR rendered mode, the first thing you want to do is go to edit and you want to check the box for set sun location. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to do two things. First off, it's going to enable the shadows, which you can find in shadows mode right here. However, if you were to enable the shadows without checking this box, it's still using SketchUp's environment lighting settings in order to set up the lighting in the scene. However, you want your lighting to look like it's coming from whatever environment you've selected. So you want to check the box for set sun location. That's going to lock the environment sun in the scene to whatever the brightest point is in the HDRI image. You can see this right here. However, one cool thing about this, because every one of these has a sun in a different position, right? And so whenever you set these to have the sun in a different position, notice how the shadows are different because the sun is in a different location. Well, if you want to tweak this or change it, you can click inside of the model right here in order to set where that brightest point is and notice how that is affecting the shadows in your scene. Now, one area where I'll use this is I like the lighting on this sunrise, for example. And again, notice how you need to set the sun location, but sometimes I want to adjust it just a little bit. So what you can do is you can come in here and you can move it up or over just a tad in order to dial in the lighting in that scene. So you're still lighting it as if that bright point in your model is setting the lighting in the scene, but you can cheat a little bit by moving this in order to really dial in those shadows to what you want. So tip two, you might have noticed when you first switch over into display photo real materials mode, it adds the environment in the background. However, the problem is it doesn't give you a ground plane. So even if you toggle shadows on in your environment settings like this, notice how those shadows are going to be cast on the ground based on the display shadows on ground settings in your shadow settings. However, it looks like your model is just floating in space. However, if you want to add a ground plane, what you can do is you can go to your styles. Within your styles, you can go into the background settings under edit and you can check the box for ground. Now, this will have the HDRI environment in the background, but you have a ground plane in here so it doesn't look like your model is floating in space. Okay, so tip three, HDRI size drives background detail and lighting detail. So when you download HDRI images from somewhere like Polyhaven, you usually have the option to download different versions of that HDRI at different resolutions. So you can see how the 1K version is going to be much smaller and it's going to be less detailed. The larger versions can be massive. So like a 16K HDRI background is going to be 383 megabytes. You probably don't want to bring anything that big into a SketchUp scene. So notice how these drive your file size, but that's also going to drive the level of detail in the HDRI images. So what I've done is I've downloaded a 1K, a 4K, and an 8K and brought it in. So the first thing I want you to pay attention when I toggle between these, so I want you to pay attention to the resolution of the image in the background. So if you're trying to use this HDRI image also as a background, 
like this, notice how the higher the resolution, the more the detail shows up in here. So that's one thing to consider. However, there's another thing to consider, which is actually the way the HDRI images affect the lighting in the scene. So notice how if I toggle between the 1K, the 4K, and the 8K, the way the light is actually reflected in this scene changes. And so one of the things I'm noticing in here is the higher the resolution, the more things like your normal maps are interacting with the light. So notice how I really kind of need to bring this down a little bit on the 8K version, where if I go with the 1K version right here, notice how I really have to crank the normals up in order to get more of a result. So you kind of have to play around with this in here. I'm finding to a certain degree the best setting that I'm finding is somewhere between that 2K and 4K because having too much light in here with the way that these work at the moment isn't necessarily helping me. It's almost making my render look worse in a lot of ways. Like notice how, for example, on this fabric, I'm getting a lot more of a fabric-y texture, but then it's also picking up more um, lighting from the scene. So you wanna strike a balance in there a little bit, but generally I would probably be staying somewhere between the 2K and the 4K versions and not much larger. The other thing to note about this is these are very large files. So this, for example, is a 100 megabyte HDRI image. This one I think was like 20 or 30, and then this one was about two megabytes right here. So you're also walking that line on file size. But one thing you should consider is if you don't like the 8K, for example, um, what you need to do is you need to delete out the scene referencing that 8K map like this. And then you can do a purge unused and notice how that's no longer being used by the scene. So it's going to go away, but you do need to make sure that you are purging your model when you're not when you have a bunch of HDRIs in here that you're not using in order to get that file size back down. Okay, so tip four involves the PBR materials and using those PBR maps in order to work together. So as you probably know, most of the new materials in SketchUp 2025, as well as materials you bring in from websites like Polygon or Polyhaven or um, any of those sites, they're going to have slots for a roughness, a normal, and an ambient occlusion map. And I guess a metalness map if it's a metal material. But what those do is those allow you to affect the way that the materials are going to interact with the light. So notice how this normal map, for example, is going to make this brick look bumpy. Now, if you pull this way too far up, the brick starts looking funky. But if you just do a little bit right here, that normal map is going to allow you to add some depth to this material. Now, the problem is this normal map also has a tendency to make your materials look kind of shiny. And so part of the reason for that is because this is kind of adding little edges in here, but it's not highlighting the darks and lights. That's where the ambient occlusion comes in. What the ambient occlusion is going to do, and you can usually download that map when you download new PBR materials, but what that ambient occlusion is going to do is it's going to highlight the crevices and dark areas of your rendered materials like this. So notice how if I add just a normal map, this still looks pretty flat, but if you bring that ambient occlusion up, you can actually highlight those dark areas in here so that it actually looks like this material has depth instead of just being this kind of like generally bright material on the walls. So that ambient occlusion map is actually really important and you want to use it to kind of like work together with your normal map in order to get the best result for your materials. But by combining those two, you can do a better job of adding a little bit of depth to your materials in SketchUp. So tip five is you can save your environment settings in different scenes. And so say that we wanted to set up a few different scenes in here with different environments to see how they look. You can add a new scene and notice how when you add that new scene, this is going to save the environment that you have selected. So Say that I had another environment like this one. I could add this as a scene right here. And then say that I wanted to try this environment. I could save that as a scene as well. So now I can toggle back and forth between the different environments that are getting saved in the scenes in order to try to go for a look that I'm looking for. And you could do the same thing with alternate views. So say that you wanted a different view like this one. You could save multiple different scenes 
with multiple different environments and toggle back and forth between them like this. Oh, so bonus tip when you're working um, with environments like this, when you've got shadows in your scene, they can take a while to update, right? If you look over here, when I'm moving this around, notice how those shadows are not updating in the model. Now, the trick about this is you can see some shadows down here are actually rotating really quickly and you can see them. The reason why is because there's two different shadow settings in SketchUp. You can use shadows to display on faces and on ground. So if you notice, these are actually on the ground plane, not on different faces in your model. Well, because of that, ground plane shadows update much more quickly than shadows on surfaces. So notice when I move this around, the shadows in here take a while to update, but the ones on the ground update almost instantaneously when I'm making this movement. So what that means is that means if you're trying to get a certain shadow angle, pay attention to the shadows on the ground in order to get things to show up first the way that you want, and then the shadows on your surfaces are going to show up a little bit later. So pay attention to those ground shadows when you're setting up the orientation in order to quickly get the proper direction. Okay, so this next tip is a little bit of a use with care tip, and that is, to if you have a model that doesn't have PBR maps in it, like in the 3D warehouse, you can try the AI texture generation, which you can find in the materials section of your tray. So say that I was to sample this material right here. Well, notice how this is a material from a legacy version of SketchUp that doesn't have any maps in it or anything like that. There is a button in here that will try to generate a photo real texture from this image. Now, you have to be careful with this because sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. The problem is when you click on the button, what it does is it goes through and it takes a material and first, it tries to make it seamless. And so if you already had a seamless texture, that's a little bit annoying because what it does is it'll go through and it'll change that texture image to make it seamless. More on that in a second. Works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't, but it'll also go through and it'll try to manually um, or I'm sorry, automatically try to generate maps for your materials. And so notice what that did is that gave us a little bit of reflection and normal in this material because it automatically generated those maps. It also automatically generated the ambient occlusion on that as well. So you can try using that in order to create seamless materials, but you do have to be careful with it. One area where I've actually found this works pretty well, um, and we'll see how it works right here, is say that I wanted to apply this wallpaper that I just took a snip of off of like Wayfair, right? Um, so first off, we don't want this material to be projected. So we'll go to texture, toggle off projected right here. There we go. But notice how it seems pretty bad because I just took a snip. Well, if I click on the button for make seamless, it's going to try to go through and make this texture seamless. Oddly enough, it seems to do a lot better with shapes like this one than it does with others. Though you can see how this didn't do a superb job. Um, you've got a bunch of overlap in here with the different materials, but it does seem to get you pretty close um, if you wanted to make it look like you had um, this particular wallpaper in here. But again, your mileage is going to vary just based on the different images and things like that. I'm hoping for improvements on this tool, but one thing to note about this is if you do run it and you don't like the material that it generates, you need to undo it so that you get that material back. Otherwise, it doesn't keep a copy of the the old material. So pluses and minuses to this one, but it is worth trying um, if you do want to generate quick um, PBR maps for your materials. My hope is in the future, they'll split out the seamless from the map generation because a lot of the time I have a texture material and I just want the maps generated. Okay, so the next tip has to do with your file size. Now, now that we're starting to bring in PBR materials with maps and high definition HDRI images, your file sizes can start getting really large really quick. So for example, on this interior render that we were talking about, I've got the 1K, the 4K, and the 8K in here um, as HDRI background files. Now, I'm currently not using the 8K, I'm using the 1K and I'm using the 4K in here, but notice how if I look in the in model section, this still shows up. And so the problem with that 
is if you look at this file size, this file is 181 megabytes, even though it's not a super big file. The reason for that is because I've got all these high resolution HDRI images sitting in the background. So one thing you're gonna notice is now, pretty much every time you save, it's going to ask you if you wanna purge your unused. And in this case, I'm gonna save this as a smaller file before we do that. And so now, if I do a file save and I say yes, to the purge unused, that's gonna purge out everything that's not being used in your model. So notice how that 8K HDRI image got removed when I purged this. Well, now if I look at the purged version of this, it's half the size of the larger version because it doesn't have that extra HDRI file sitting there eating up um, memory and other things like that. So you wanna make sure that you're purging. Now notice how when you do purge this, it does mean it's gone in your model, right? That means that you can't access it anymore and you would have to re-add it. So do be aware of that, but try to be purging anything you're not using in the model in order to keep your file size low. Okay, and so bonus tip. Now that you're rendering a lot, you're going to want to swap out different materials for different looks, and there's not really a built-in tool in SketchUp that's really great for that. However, there's an extension in the extensions warehouse from TomTom, which is really good for this. If we look for material replacer, it's going to be a free tool from TomTom. Note that you also need to download his TomTom library extension and install that as well but what this tool is going to do which you can also find in the extension warehouse by the right by the way you can just look for tt underscore library you just want to install and enable that as well but now what that tool is going to do is you can go into tools material replacer and you can pick a material and you can replace it with a different material in your model so notice how i can look at all of these different options really quickly within the model like this for the different kinds of materials. The only thing I don't like about this is it also replaces these swatches, which I wish you had a way to not do, but you can use this in order to quickly swap out a material just by applying it to a surface over here and then using material replacer to replace it and look at it as an option. All right, so just a reminder, we do have that rendering in SketchUp 2025 workshop in the SketchUp Essentials course on May 8th. So if you do wanna check that out, um, you can do that by joining the course. You can do it through this page you can learn more by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash render workshop. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What are your rendering tips for rendering in SketchUp 2025? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.